Going back, I'll never be the same. Cause all my hope is in Jesus. Thank God my yesterday's gone. And all my sins are forgiven. Breaks a man Breaks him down to his knees I've been broken more than a time or two Then he picked me up and showed me what it means to be a man And all my hope is in Thank God my yesterday's gone And all my sins are forgiven And I've been washed by the blood And all my hope is in Jesus, thank God my yesterday's gone, and all my sins are forgiven, and I've been washed by the blood.
unto the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear the Son of God And the sound of his voice is so sweet, the birds hush their singing, and the melody that he gave to me within my heart is Sure, I'm thankful that he's walking with us and talking to us and talking with us. Brother John mentioned about hand, be walking hand in hand with the Lord. And, uh, you know, he told us that he had never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. And whenever we get saved, he, he took on the, re, uh, I don't get it. Well, it is a responsibility according to his word that he was going to stay with us all the way. And he'd go with us all the way. And sometimes uh, we sense him a lot more more so than others, uh, but I'm thankful that he uh, he still speaks and he still guides. I was thinking this morning we got up going up to Chattanooga and uh, I had some stuff to see about, and uh, and I got to come out of the restroom, come, went by the hat rack, and the Holy Spirit just as plain said, uh, "Put that hat on right there." Amen. And so I put it on and it said, it says on the hat, Jesus paid it all. And so we went on through the day and, and uh, didn't, you know, see much. Uh, I, I wear those hats sometimes just to provoke uh, conversation and get somebody to comment. Uh, but that uh, today I was there at B's restroom suffering, B's restaurant, 
up in Chattanooga. Some of you know where it are. I was uh, going to say I was suffering for Jesus. Amen. <laughs> well, we was up at B's restaurant and sitting there eating. And uh, there was a fellow and his wife sitting next across the table. And uh, he said to me about halfway through the meal, he said, uh, I like that hat. Hey, Amen. Opened up conversation and we talked for probably 30 minutes. Uh, him, a farmer and chicken man, and he was concerned about the railroad stuff and uh, getting his seed for his chickens and all and on and on. And uh, so I listened to him for a while and then I, I told him, I said, well, I said, I believe that God is ultimately in control. He tells us that he works all things after the counsel of his own will. And I, so, I said, I know we're in trouble at times, but I said, as, uh, as a Christian, we don't have nothing to worry about. Amen. The Bible tells us to uh, not lean to our own understanding and all of our, you know, trust in the Lord with all of our heart. And I thought about that verse, the more we trust, the less we worry. Right. Amen. The bigger our God is, the less our problems are. Amen. So as we look to the Lord, uh, we know that we have a God in heaven that can be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. And uh, let me tell you tonight, the Lord hadn't lost any of his attributes. He can still heal. He can still say, he can do anything. Bible tells us all power is given to him. And uh, we're thankful that we've got that, uh, got that God as our Savior. Bible said greater is he that's in us and he that's in the world. And uh, I'm just resting in the Lord. I like what Brother Randy Sutton said. He said if he gets so bad uh, in Gordon County that there's only one soda cracker in the county, he said, I'll be nibbling off of one end of it. <laughs> the Bible said that he had not forsake us and he was going to give us the things that we need to supply our need. I'm, I'm convinced of that. Amen. Amen. That he's going to supply all of our need. Uh, may not be exactly what we want or the, what we're planning about. Matter of fact, that verse I used a while ago in Proverbs, he tells us not to lean to our own understanding, uh, but uh, trusting him with all of our heart. Yeah. And I promise, I, I thought about that verse several times this week. I called Robbie, he's praying about a, a church and uh, he, there's a couple of people in a couple of places that have contacted him. He's looking about going to Kentucky and uh, just come on my heart as I was praying for him. Uh, I called him and I said, now, Rob, I don't know if you're going to Kentucky or not. But I said, I know you're going somewhere. I said, God gave me this verse and I quoted that to him. And the last of that verse says, and the Lord will direct thy paths. Amen. Amen. And God, God orders our steps. And uh, I mean, God will put you where he wants you to be if you'll just trust in him. Uh, I don't believe in politicking a whole lot. I, I don't think there's nothing wrong with uh, putting out uh, information about, uh, about what's going on in your life. But I be, believe God's big enough to put, him, put you where he wants you to be. Oh, yeah. Amen. Right. He, he, he knows what's going on in your life. And uh, we can trust in him. And uh, he'll, he'll bring it to pass whatever we're going through. Let's look in uh, uh, Psalms 46 tonight. I'd ask the Lord to give me something that would please him and help you and uh, be an encouragement to you. Uh, we live in a discouraging time and uh, a lot of times uh, uh, there don't seem to be any, any encouragement. Uh, we think things are going to get better and sure enough they turn around and they seem to get worse. Amen. But I'm thankful that God knows what's going on and we can trust in him and uh, not fret and uh, God will take care of us. Psalms 46 I'll read several verses. <coughs> Excuse me. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will we not fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried uh, into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and are troubled, uh, though the mountains shake, with the swelling thereof, Selah, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God and the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her and uh, that right early. The heathen raged and the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice and the earth melted. 
the Lord of hosts is with us. Let's skip over to verse number 10. Be still and know that I am God and I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of, the, of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge and strength. Father in heaven, we're so thankful tonight, Lord, for the fact, Lord, that you are, uh, Lord, that you are in us and we're in you. And uh, we're glad, God, that we can put our faith and trust in you and you'll bring it to pass. I pray, Lord, if there's somebody troubled tonight in heart, that you'd let them hang on to the verse there in John 14, where it tells us not let our, let our heart not be troubled. And uh, we believe in God, so we also believe in you. And uh, we know there's better days ahead for the Christian. And we'll praise you for whatever's accomplished here tonight as we ask it in Jesus' name. Be a very short uh, message tonight, but I thought about these thoughts as I tried to prepare this evening. Uh, the first off, I looked and I see in verse number one that there is a refuge. Thank God for the refuge there is in the Lord. Verse number one, he's a refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble thereof. We will not fear what the earth be removed and though the mountains uh, be carried in the midst of the sea. I was thinking about that volcano and how they said it was probably the biggest one ever been. And I thought about, I believe, and this is, this is RV theology, I believe that, that the volcanoes that happen uh, in the middle of the earth, God is just, uh, uh, he's fulfilling scripture where the Bible said that hell is beneath and it's moved to meet folks that don't trust him and it is coming and hell is enlarging itself, yeah, making more room for people uh, that will not hear the word of God. And uh, we can't do anything except just tell them. That, and, uh, but I'm thankful tonight, Brother John, that God put a heart in me uh, to trust him and believe his word. Yeah. Amen. That's of the Lord too. The Bible says salvation is the Lord. If it hadn't been for God, Amen. And give me a heart of belief. I wouldn't have never been saved. Right. Amen. It's God. Amen. Thank the Lord for his goodness. But there is a refuge. I, whenever I got saved, I run to that refuge. And I found uh, in that refuge strength. Amen. I found, uh, I found uh, the overcoming of fear. I had a little lady at the Chili Dog Restaurant over uh, in L.A.J. Uh, here a while back. And uh, there was a storm came up outside and it looked bad. It was thunder and lightning. Uh, she was scared as our dog Chip. Now he's a scared of lightning and thunder. He's a gun shy. That's reading. Uh, he got gave to Carlene, I think. But you can hear a pop of lightning or a gunshot and you'll see Chip's face right up at the back door. Wanting to get in that house, amen. He's a scared of that racket, amen. But that's kind of the way that little young lady reminded me of as she looked out the windows and it looked like it was just been to come a tornado, amen. And uh, she was just uh, petrified. And you know, I thought about the scripture where the Bible said there's fear and tor there's torment and fear. Amen. And I was just trying to encourage her and help her a little bit and get her to settle down a little bit. I said, "Hun, would you like me to tell you how that you cannot be afraid whenever stuff like that happens? And uh, whenever you have storms coming? And she said, I sure would. Amen. I use that verse there where it said, though the mountains be dissolved. Amen. We do not have to be afraid if we're trusting in God. Amen. Putting our faith and trust in I put him to the test many times in stormy weather. I remember one particular time uh, I was over going up to uh, Dayton, Tennessee, and I went across that bridge. And, and honestly, it felt like that house is going to blow over that bridge. And down in that water, I know you, some of you have been across that bridge. But I just claimed the scripture and asked the Lord to calm the wind down. It seemed like I, he just made me a, an alleyway through across that bridge. Got over there. was houses and everything blowing around over there. But God could still, he's a still God that he used to be. Yes, Amen. Whenever he calmed the water of the sea, he still can do that today for us. And we don't have to be afraid because there is a refuge that we can go to and find help in times of trouble. I know that uh, we all go through troublous times. Matter of fact, the Bible said the man is born a woman a few days and full of trouble. Right. Amen. We're going to have troubles in this life, but we've got a God that will help us through the troubles if we'll just put our faith and trust in him. We can whistle. 
when the winds are blowing, amen, when things are going bad, we can hum, amen, if we're putting our faith and trust in Him, knowing that God will help us. So there is a refuge here in verse number 1 and 2. And uh, thank God for the refuge there is in the Lord. Many, many times in my life, I've only been saved for 30 some years, but I've come to uh, places in my life that there's nobody else could help me except the Lord. Amen. Amen. But I put my faith and trust in Him best I could and prayed and He helped me through the troubled times and calmed the storm. Amen. And God will do that for anybody that's saved. And uh, so there is a refuge. Even though you have troubles in this life and you don't know really which way to turn, you trying to make decisions. Uh, uh, I told my wife, they made trying to make a decision about a, uh, a situation. And I told her, I said, used to, whenever I was about 25, I'd just make decisions like that. You know, just, I'd make it go on, amen. But now that I'm in my 70s, I want to be a little more careful. <laughs> I found out that uh, there's a lot of things in my life that I've reaped, or I'm, I'm reaping what I sowed. And so I've made up my mind by the good grace of God that I just want to sow good fields from here on in. Amen. <laughs> and reap those good things from the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. So there is a refuge. And uh, He is in control. I wrote two or three things down here. If we realize that God is in control, <clears throat> He'll help us to honor Him more so. If we if we put our if we put our trust and faith in Him, and then it'll it'll help us with our happiness, Amen. You know, whenever we feel safe and secure in the things of the Lord, uh, it does help our happiness. Uh, the Bible tells us over at Thessalonians, uh, for us in all things give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus coming. Uh, and whenever things happen that's uh, unfavorable to our flesh, unfavorable to us, a lot of times the devil uses that as a trick. He tries to get us unhappy. Amen. Because if we get unhappy about situation, we try to find other things to fill in that gap. Amen. And so it kind of turns into, the unhappiness turns into unholiness. Amen. Uh, we start doing things that is not pleasing uh, to the Lord. And uh, we're, we're, we need to be very careful not let the devil uh, get us in that trap of trying to fill in uh, uh, the unhappiness through worldly things. Amen. And uh, so it'll help us when we realize that one day that we're going to give account for everything that we do. And it honors God if we realize that we're standing before God and the Bible tells us. That the eyes of the Lord in every place beholding the evil and the good, he tells us his eyes are upon the righteous. Amen. amen. So there is a refuge, amen, we can put our faith and trust in. And then secondly, I wrote down, there is a river. We read down through here in verse number four, there is a river. There are streams whereof make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. Whenever the Lord comes in our life as Christians, uh, he, he, he develops a river uh, that we're, well, the Bible says in the book of John, that he that believeth in the Lord out of his belly shall come rivers of living water. Amen. And so he fills us up. He told the woman at the well in John 4, he said, the water that I give will be in you a well of water springing up into eternal life. Amen. So whenever uh, we get saved and we put our faith and trust in God, He comes in us and He, he, he makes a river within us. And uh, our, uh, our word goes out and God uses uh, us to help other people. The Bible teaches uh, that uh, that uh, scripture I said a while ago, uh, that uh, whenever uh, we believe in God and we trust in Him, that uh, we will help other people. You know, I got to think a little bit today as I was reading this, you can't stop a river. You know, you can hinder it. You can even dig a channel and cause it to be diverted. But, you know, a river, uh, if you stop it up, you know, after a while, it'll break out somewhere else. Amen. You can't stop a river. And that's the way the word of God is within us. I was, think about Isaiah 54 where he says that his word will not return void. And it's, uh, we need to just continue to let God live through us and let our work so shine before men 
they see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. Amen. So there's a river. After we find that refuge in the Lord, uh, he becomes a river in us. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Amen. We can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. It, aren't you glad of that? Amen. There's nothing coming our way tomorrow that by the good grace of God, we can't overcome and we can't take care of. Amen. I can do all things. The devil continually lies and says, well, you can't do this or you can't go here. You can't accomplish this, but I can do anything God wants me to. Amen. Thank God for the power of God. And he's greater than, uh, he's greater than the power of the uh, influence of the enemy. I had mentioned uh, somebody saying that uh, a preacher, I heard him on TV saying uh, <clears throat> that God wasn't ultimately in control. But he is in control. He works all things after the counsel of his own will. Now, he does not ordain everything that happens, but he allows it just like he did with Job. Amen. He come to the devil come and said, you know, uh, about Job. And the Lord said, you can do anything, but you can't take his life. Amen. If the devil was in control and, and had the ultimate say so, he'd kill every Christian in the house. Amen. He, he'll do away with us, but I'm glad God is in control and the devil can only do what God allows him to do. So as we live for the Lord and uh, our life is lived, the Bible tells us that we'll uh, accomplish those things that God wants us to. The word of God will not return void. But if we just keep giving out the word, a lot of times we get, get, start, get discouraged with our family and different things going on. But if we just keep giving out the word, it's like it's a gospel dynamite. Amen. It'll get the job done. So there's a river. But then thirdly, I wrote down, I told you it wouldn't be very long, uh, there is a ruler. Verse number 10, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Amen. Thank the Lord. He's in control. He, he is the ruler. I was riding down the road in Chattanooga behind a car today, and it had a, a picture of a cross, and it said something to this effect. He said, if this symbol uh, offends you, you need to be careful because one day you'll stand before him. Amen. The Bible tells us every knee is going to bow. Every tongue is going to confess. Amen. No matter what people do, no matter if people believe or not believe here, uh, they one day will stand before God Amen. and give account for every idle word. And so we need to just keep on keeping on for the glory of God and realize we're on the winning side. Yeah. Amen. And there's a refuge that we have. We can go to God with our needs. We can go and pray and God will answer prayer. Amen. I, I know God answers, answers personal prayers for you. But boy, what an encouragement it is to just pay, play, pray a prayer, a simple prayer maybe, and see the direct answer that God, uh, uh, that God gives. Uh, I, I preached a little bit over at the camp some time back of what can we expect from here and on in. We can expect God to keep on answering prayer. He said he ha we have not because we ask not. Amen. Amen. We need to ask. Amen. And then God will answer prayer. We can expect God to answer prayer. And then we can expect God uh, to keep on saving people. Even though it's, we're in the time of gleaning now, where you don't see near as many saved as they used to be. I mean, God could redo that, undo that. If we could have revival, I'm not being a doomsday preacher, but I, I am saying that there's a lot a less that gets saved than used to. Uh, but there, God's still saving people. Amen. We can, God, we can expect God to do that. And then thirdly, uh, we can expect God to give us enough grace to deal with whatever comes in our life. As he told Paul, he said, Paul, he said, I'm not going to remove the trouble. I'm not going to remove the thorn. But he said, my grace will be sufficient. He said, I'll take care of it. So we can expect God to give us enough grace to face all of our problems. Amen. So let's keep our head up and uh, keep on the firing line. Thank God he's coming soon. Amen. All right, let's stand together.